Almost four million people have died in natural disasters during the past 30 years, while four and a half billion people were affected. If you ask the ordinary man in the street today whether or not man and human activity are to blame for the increased number of hurricanes on the planet and their increased destructive force, I think that every other person will say yes, this is a consequence of human activity. I think that uh, what's happening in our world today, uh, all the uh, tsunamis and the freak weather everywhere and uh, the terrorism and the fear that is uh, gripping us, all of the things that are happening uh, is a result of unhealthy individual health. And it affects the other way too. Okay, and also I think it's, uh, it, it's a result of water being polluted. The phenomenon of structural memory enables water to take an impression of everything that happens around it and to connect all living systems together. And each one of us is a link in an endless chain of information transmission. But in addition, each of us is also a source of information. Every one of our actions, a thought, an emotion, an uttered word, separates from us and becomes part of the overall energo-informational environment. Informational dirt is poisoning the water, accumulating layer by layer in its memory. If that process were to continue endlessly, the water could lose its mind. But it is endowed with a self-cleansing capacity. This occurs at the moment of phase transition when it vaporizes and then condenses and falls as rain or when it freezes and then melts. Shaking off the informational grime, water preserves its basic structure, that is, the program for life. Einstein, for example, once said, I would like to know what he is thinking, meaning God. Everything else is just details. But I would like to know how he created this world. Everything begins in water. In a certain sense, we can say that everything originates in water. And in water, everything comes to an end. For all peoples, a person must be clean in order to stand before God. In all the world's religions, water is a kind of intermediary that unites man with the Creator. The Jews perform ablutions in mikvahs. For Muslims, ablution is prerequisite for prayer. If we trace the references to water in the Holy Scripture, they are often associated with the idea of purification. This is most vivid, of course, in the narrative of the baptism of the Israelites in the River Jordan in the time of the prophet John, John the Baptist, the forerunner. John baptized with the baptism of repentance, and the image and the symbol of people's repentance was immersion in the river. In the Christian church, there is the sacrament of baptism. First of all, why is it a sacrament? Because it remains ultimately hidden from us. What happens with a person at the moment of baptism? It is known that the divine energy, which in the language of the church we call grace, descends upon the person. There have been many wars on religious grounds in human history, but in our experiment, 
water reacted to individual words that had a religious content by forming beautiful crystals. This means that the conception of our nature coincides with each religion. The Christian prayer, the Buddhistic prayer, the Muslim prayer. Dr. Emota presumes that serious crimes are committed most of all in areas where people curse the most often. Idiot. I hate you. Laboratory containers of water were inscribed with hieroglyphs denoting words and the names of well-known people. Love. Hope. Soul. Mother Teresa. Hitler. Emoto Masaru's numerous experiments aimed at finding the word that cleanses water most powerfully have shown that it is not just one word but a combination of two. Love and gratitude. The universe was created by the absolute, by the source that produced all the existing and all its material manifestations. Each of us has an element from the water of primeval ocean. Our every word is like a water drop, a medium of thought, a source of information. And we all are to repay the absolute with love and gratitude.